Welcome to the Lipper Technical Training Institute. My name's Chet Delebeck. Today we're going to be unboxing the Smart Jack from Lipper Components. We're also going to be installing it on a unit, talking about operation and also care and maintenance of this. All right, so let's go ahead and get this un unboxed. First thing we're going to pull out is we're going to pull out the bolts that come with the system. We're also going to pull out the owner's manual. All right, so let's get this pulled out. I also have a manual override handle and the jack itself. So I'm going to slide this out of the way. All right, here we go. Okay, so now we have the smart jack out of the box. We're going to go ahead and talk about tooling real quick. I'm going to be using an impact driver. You can use a standard uh, socket and a ratchet. You also need an appropriate socket with an adapter if you're using an impact driver and you may need an extension on this. So to prep this for installation, the first thing I need to do is remove the foot pad itself. All right. So one thing you'll notice on this is this does have the drop foot leg on it. This comes with the smart jack itself and it gives you an extra amount of space so that you can get closer to the ground for extension or retraction. All right, so if you come with me, we'll go ahead and we'll get this installed. Okay, so now let's install the tongue jack. I already have the previous jack removed and I have the unit supported with jack stands so it's safe and secure to work on. So when we install this, we simply just reinsert it back into the location that we previously had the tongue jack. And now all I'm gonna do is using my impact and the appropriate socket, we're going to install the bolts. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you install the bolts is don't over tighten them right at the beginning. Don't tighten them up. Leave them a little bit loose. That allows you to shift the position in case you need to realign the holes properly. All right, now that I have the bolts installed, now I can go through and torque them down so that it's nice and secure. The last thing we need to do as far as installation, other than our wiring, is install the drop foot pad. All right, so you've got a line right out here that aligns with the side of the jack, you simply are going to slide this into position. Now in normal circumstances you would have this fully retracted, but since I'm going to go ahead and extend this, I left this with one hole exposed so that when I extend it down I have a little bit more reach. All right, the next step is take my power wire with my 30 amp inline fuse and I'm going to run this to the positive terminal of the battery. The ground for this actually comes through the frame itself, so there's no extra ground wire for this. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're running this power wire is to make sure that you route it in a way so that it does not get caught on a frame or get drugged when you're towing the vehicle. So I'm gonna feed it through. I'm going to bring it back up in and I'm going to make sure it's nice and secure so that when I reconnect this to the battery, we're good. So now we've got the tongue jack installed. We're going to talk about unhooking from the tow vehicle. In this instance, my tow vehicle is being represented by my two jack stands so that you can see what we're actually doing here nice and clearly. Uh, the first thing we want to do before you unhook your tow vehicles, you want to chalk your tires so that you don't have to worry about that unit shifting while you're unhooking. You do have a, a standard light. You can turn the light on. That'll also open up your battery indicator. Tells you the state's, uh, state of your battery when you're ready to unhook. So the next step is press and hold extend. We're going to run the tongue jack all the way to the ground and lift it slightly off of the tow vehicle itself. Take some of the pressure off of it. 
One thing to keep in mind when you're running the tongue jack is that you want it to have a nice stable platform. So when you lift it, you want the foot pad to be solid. You also want to make sure that you're taking the weight of the trailer off of the tow vehicle itself. Once you have the weight off the tow vehicle, then you can go ahead, disconnect your safety lines, your chains, and your seven way. Uh, now we got to talk about setting hitch height. So to set hitch height on the smart jack, all we're going to do is press the up and down arrow for five seconds. All right, so we go one, two, three, four, five. The light will flash. And now our hitch height is set. So now you're ready to leave. You're done camping. You're ready to get your tow vehicle hooked back up to your camper. So all we need to do to activate hitch height is we're going to press it through three times, one, two, and hold on the third time until hitch height activates. So we'll come in here, we go one, two, and hold on the third time. Now hitch height is activated and it's gonna to return to front of the unit to where it was once you, had once you had set your hitch height and pulled your tow vehicle away. This allows you to back that tow vehicle directly up underneath the ball, get everything aligned, hook up your safety chains, and now all I have to do is press the retract, lower the, tow, lower the coach back onto the tow vehicle, lock it into position. So once you have all your safety chains connected, all your seven-way connected, everything's nice and secure to the tow vehicle, at this point then you can activate your auto retract feature of your smart jack. So what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna push the retract button twice and hold on the third time. And then once you notice that the auto retract feature kicks in, you can release it at that point. So one, two, three, hold it. Now the tongue jack is activated, it's auto retract feature. It'll automatically retract for 30 seconds or until that tongue jack is fully retracted. So you also have the feature of being able to press a button at any time and stop the auto retract feature in case you know, notice something wasn't quite right. Okay, so let's talk about manual override. In the event that you have a power loss, you can still utilize your smart jack by manually overriding it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is reach back here. You're gonna unplug your 30 amp fuse. The next step will be to pull the plug out of the top of the jack itself. That allows you to access the, the bolt on top of the smart jack. So if we want to extend this, we're simply going to grab the crank handle. We're going to turn it clockwise to extend. And if we need to retract it, we simply grab it. We turn it counterclockwise to retract. Once the jack is fully extended or retracted and put back in the position you need it, simply take the cap. Put the plug back in, reinstall your fuse, and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. Troubleshooting on the smart jack is fairly simple as well. One thing to keep in mind is if you do have a low battery, that can cause a fuse to blow. Making sure that you have a fully charged 12 volt deep cycle battery will ensure that the, the smart jack properly operates. The last thing I want to talk about today is care and maintenance of the tongue jack, which is pretty straightforward and simple. All we have to do is keep that inner jack leg clean and free of dirt and debris and lubricate it from time to time with some dry silicone lubricant. Other than that, you're good to go with the smart jack. So get out there, enjoy your camper, and thank you very much for joining me at the Lipper Technical Institute. Have a great day.